Hi, welcome back to part two of the practical life area in my series, Teach Your Child the Montessori Method at Home. Um, before we begin, I just wanted to go through some key points to remember when you are teaching your child. Number one, the seating is very important. So if, your child, if you are right-handed, sit to the right of your child. If you are left-handed, sit to the left of your child. This way you won't obstruct his or her view when they're observing you do the activity. Number two, try not to speak. I know it's hard to um, not explain what you're doing, but you want your child to mimic what you were doing and not what you were saying. Number three, um, everything is oriented from left to right. Um, that's because it's preparing your child to read from left to right and to print from left to right. And number four, exaggerate your movements and exaggerate your expressions. Okay, um, let's begin. Now this next activity I'd like to introduce you to is called tonging. I have tongs, I have two bowls, and on the left, in the left hand bowl, I've got marbles in here. You could use anything really. I've used lily racers, or for Easter I've used little tiny chocolate eggs. Um, you could use stones, anything you need um, to help with the activity. So this is tonging. Notice the way I'm gripping the tongs. And everything is from left to right. And they love to hear the marbles hit the glass. And this activity is called tonging. Now, if your child wants to continue and do it again, please remember to turn the tray over so the bowl with the marbles is on the left-hand side. Tonging. The next activity is called a sorting activity. Now what you can do after your dishwasher is finished running or after you finished washing the dishes, you can put the cutlery in a tray and provide your child with the cutlery tray and they could put the cutlery into the right slots. Sorting activities help your child observe the differences in shape, color, size, dimension, and this is called sorting. Now this activity is called clothes pegging. Now we just have a cup, some wooden clothes pegs, and all we are asking your child to do is pick, pick up a clothes peg using his or her pincer grip or fine motor skills, place it on the edge of the glass or the cup, or you could even use a bowl. I've even seen children build upwards. Okay, and this is clothes pegs. When your child is finished, remember to ask your child to put the clothes pegs back in the container. Again, this will help with the manual dexterity, fine motor skills, and that pincer grip, which is so important for holding a pencil. Clothes pegging. My next activity is called bottles and lids. So inside this cute little box, I've got some empty jars with lids.
what I would do is remove the lid from the bottle and put them on either end of the table mat. And we all have bottles and lids that are empty laying around the house. Then I would take either the lids or the, bo or the bottoms, the bottles, and mix them up. In this case, I'm just mixing up the lids. And what your child must do is match the lid to the bottle. This activity is a matching activity, but it also helps encourage your child's manual dexterity. And this activity is called Bottles and Lids. When you ask your child to put this activity away, ask them to place all the, box, the bottles back in its box. And place it back on the shelf where it lives. Bottles and Lids. My next activity is called pin pushing. So what you need for this is the tray, of course. You need a cork that you can actually get at the dollar store. A piece of paper with a shape on it. You can, use, you can actually do a letter if you wanted to, a heart, a star. Um, I like the triangle. It's a bit basic for a young child. And two push pins. One push pin to hold the paper and the other push pin to actually use. Now it may be difficult for you to see exactly what I'm doing so I started it a little bit but what your child would do would be um, push the pin right onto the line. Okay. This encourages the pincer grip, fine motor skills, and coordination. And of course, you would monitor your child. When your child is finished, and they love this part. Let me just move this up. Simply take the paper off, and depending on how closely they pushed the pin through on the line, you can actually tear apart the shape or the figure that you drew. And it's such an accomplishment for them when they can push the picture right through. And there you go. This is called pin pushing. Now another variation to this, if they're not ready for pin pushing yet, you can use a bingo dabber. So I've got my cork board. I've got the two push, pun, the push, uh, push pins and they're holding the paper in place. And I'm just gonna simply use a bingo, bingo dabber to trace or push around the lines, or around the line.
This activity is called locks and keys. So basically I have the tray with some locks. You could start off with two if your child is very young. Um, and some keys. So basically what you would do is take the key or take the lock, choose a key, and try to open it. And then you could ask the child to take the key out and lock it back up again. The holding of the key encourages the pincer grip, the fine motor skills, and the manual dexterity. Locks and keys. This next activity is called folding cloths. Um, once my boys learn how to fold cloths, I move them onto folding laundry. So now my boys at five, seven, and nine, they sort the laundry, they fold the laundry, and they put it away, including mine and my husband's. So now I don't really have to worry about laundry. So this is called folding cloths. All you need are four different washcloths. It doesn't have to be new. And you just Sharpie or with a marker, draw a line down the middle. That's the first one. The second one has a line a diag on a diagonal from corner to corner. The third cloth, the lines are in a cross. And the next one, or the last one, they're from corner to corner on a diagonal. Folding cloths. Now, when you're tracing with your fingers, okay, the dotted line or the marker, always go from left to right. So you're tracing the dotted line and then folding on the dotted line. And that's folding cloths.
And that concludes the second part of the practical life area in my series called Teach Your Child the Montessori Method at Home. Now keep in mind that I've only talked to you or taught you about 14 practical life activities when there are about 100 of them. And if you want to see more, please drop me a line at info at hotmama.ca, info at h-a-w-t-m-a-m-a dot c-a. Also, for you hot mamas out there that want to become a certified Montessori teacher, please check out newboroughmontessori.com. That's N-E-W-B-O-R-O-U-G-H, Montessori.com. It's a MACT accredited institution and internationally recognized. Um, I want to thank you all for tuning in, and please don't forget to check out my blog at hotmama.ca. And this is Mylene signing off, and please remember, stay classy, sassy, and a bit badassy. <laughs>